Hello, I'm Graham Green. I would like to speak to you as someone who has seen the devastating effects of diabetes. For thousands of years, diabetes was rare, perhaps non-existent among our people. Today, one in five Native American adults has diabetes, and our teenagers are the fastest growing group being diagnosed. This epidemic has touched all our lives. It has certainly touched mine. I watched an aunt die from the slow, painful effects of diabetes. And just recently, my youngest brother was diagnosed with type 2. We have rediscovered that food and a healthy diet can not only help us prevent diabetes. For those who have type 2 diabetes, healthy foods can help turn it around. For some, the result is nothing short of miraculous. This program is the beginning of a new journey. It is a direction that can literally change your life. You will meet people whose lives have been transformed. You will also meet researchers whose research has shown that the answer to diabetes prevention may lie in our age-old food traditions. That's right. Food is the medicine that will help us reclaim our health. And we can put this knowledge into action for ourselves, our children, and generations to come. Thank you. I come from North Dakota. I'm from the Mandan Hidatsa and Arikara Nation. We have an epidemic of diabetes on our reservation. Um, it's rare to go into a room with five people and less than three not have diabetes. The first thing I noticed was I was thirsty all the time. Then I was really lethargic. I couldn't get enough sleep. I couldn't rest enough. My mom was always tired. She I don't know. She just laid in bed all day. We did nothing. I would just go outside by myself. And she would just be sleeping all day. It alarmed me. And I went to the doctor and they said, your blood sugar is really high. Are you diabetic? And I'm like, no, I'm only 23. I'm only 23. How could I be, you know? And then um, I never went back because I was offended. How dare you ask me if I'm diabetic? Things are not going in the right direction at all. If you look at the latest figures, one in three children born since the year 2000 is eventually going to develop this disease if things don't change. We have to think about this disease differently. We have to find something better than just a new screening test or a new kind of prescription. I was 288 pounds. I noticed that my joints hurt. It was hard for me to get around. I sweated very easily. It was a chore just to get up and go help clean around the house or to go outside and get wood. It was a chore. Socializing with people was harder. More or less, I didn't care about what people thought. Like physically of me, but emotionally, and people didn't care emotionally about how I felt. Nobody wanted to socialize with me. When Jensen was heavy, he didn't really express how he felt, or you could just see it on the way his attitude over time, he just got quiet. So I would be like, let's just go take a walk, or you wanna go with me, I'm going somewhere. It worried me that I wasn't un that I wasn't healthy, that I just thought it was normal. I just thought it was normal to be overweight. That everybody else just gets chubby. Everybody just gets chubby. I just thought that. I started, you know, coming down with the 
sugar diabetes and after I got that new things increased to other symptoms like high blood pressure and high cholesterol and sleep apnea that was one of the uh, one of the, my main um, serious illness that I had well they told me that I don't you know if I don't control my my diabetes you know I would uh, eventually go blind and um, other like heart heart problems and you know hearing problems and um, they told me that I would lose all my teeth too and I didn't want that to happen it was kind of uh, hard for me to accept you know that I had sugar diabetes I was on 22 different medications. My mom was very sick when I was little. I thought she was dying. When she got up, um, I would have to make the bed because she was, she had to go do something else, like go take her medicine. And then I would have to count her pills, just make sure that she's on daily what she's doing. I would just say, are you okay? Do you need anything? I would kind of take care of her. Um, it was, I guess, a lot of work for a little child. I was afraid of her going away, dying, and I wouldn't have anyone to take care of me. Why is this happening? Why are so many people struggling with obesity or with type 2 diabetes? Is it a gene or is it something environmental? We really wanted to do something about this. So with the support of the National Institutes of Health, we began a research study. And it was based on the observation that if you look at the countries where there's not much diabetes and not much obesity, they all have one thing in common, which is that their diets are predominantly plant-based, like rice in Japan, for example. So we had a large group of people who had diabetes, and we asked them to follow a completely plant-based diet. Beans and grains and vegetables and fruits, abundant quantities. They weren't counting calories and eating tiny little portions, but everything they were eating was healthy and plant-based. And the results were spectacular. People lost weight, their blood sugars came down, their cholesterols came down, their need for medicine came down. In some cases, they got off their medicines completely. And when the results came out, I was asked to do an interview on a Native American radio program. And I was describing the health power of grains and beans and vegetables against diabetes. A woman called into the show and she said, the foods you're using are almost identical to a Native American tradition called the Three Sisters. And these traditional foods kept her ancestors healthy generation after generation after generation. And I got totally excited about this. How could these simple very simple basic foods have so much health power. Traditional foods um, was basically um, bean squash and corn. In those, the old days when the people consumed that, they were slimmer, they were healthier. Many uh, changes have come about due to white man's influence. People are consuming a lot of ready-made foods processed foods and uh, fast foods. Therefore, we see uh, an increase in diabetes and obesity and other um, diseases. When I was young, we moved around a lot, so the food choices changed. Everything was processed, everything was packaged. I lost my cravings for vegetables and the love I had for fresh tomatoes, for carrots, for cucumbers, even strawberries. For myself, it's a, it's kind of a short story. When I was growing up, I was always starving. I was always hungry because uh, we were being raised with a big family. But after you go to school, you find a job, and you have more money, and you tend to spend more money on food. I started noticing that I was getting getting really big and people started telling me. I didn't really um, mind, you know, looking like that until it started affecting my, my, my health. I 
Traditionally, people ate very, very simple foods, things that came from the earth, vegetables, fruits, simple foods. But those foods kept people strong. I contacted Betty Delro from the Navajo Nation because I wanted to learn more about these healthy Native American traditions. And I also wanted to see if the research that we had been doing would be meaningful as well. So I went to Arizona and Betty and her team showed me all about medicinal plants and ways of preparing traditional foods. We decided to set up a series of classes, a program that could allow people who had diabetes to learn to make healthy traditional foods and to see if that could help them. We didn't really know what to expect. Who knew if people would come to our classes, if they would keep coming, if they would like the food, if they would be able to find these foods in their communities. It was really an experiment. We had some great partners. We worked with the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center in Albuquerque and the Institute for American Indian Arts in Santa Fe. And we worked especially closely with the Navajo Nation Special Diabetes Project. And we had two great Native American chefs working with us who developed some wonderful recipes. They were able to demonstrate that you could pull together these dishes that were affordable and convenient, and most importantly, that they tasted great. And people came to our classes, and they kept coming back, and they raved about the foods. The turning point, the, the one thing that got me over the cliff to say, I don't want to be like this anymore, is I didn't want my daughter to see her mom with no legs. I didn't want my daughter to have the burden of pushing me in a wheelchair. I didn't want my daughter to be burdened with, Mom, did you take your insulin? Mom, did you take your metformin? I didn't want her to worry about that. I didn't want her to be in that situation where she would have to worry whether her mom's going to be here tomorrow or not. Dr. Barnard, <laughs> um, Lois Frank, Carolyn Trapp, Food for Life class. It just changed my life. I didn't even know what a radish tastes like. I didn't know star fruit. I didn't know you can make a taco taste so good. I didn't know you can blend these vegetables, these beans, just vegetarian items. I didn't know you could blend these items together and make them taste so good. And, and it satiated you, it fulfilled you. And it was also, fun. Before Dr. Barnard's class, I thought there was kidney beans, pinto beans, now there's garbanzo beans, azuki beans, mung beans, all kinds of beans, and you can sprout any kind of bean. Also, juicing, that's really fun. Flavors, the colors, the smells, the way it feels, after, after you ingest it, you don't feel heavy, you don't feel tired. In fact, after you have a glass of juice, it's not hard to go out for a walk. It's not hard to go do some layups with the daughter. <laughs> That's the best part about the, being vegan, I guess, is um, how it makes you feel after you ingest the food. These foods are nourishing. They give the body what you need, but they also have a lot of fiber to fill you up, a lot of vitamins to keep you healthy. They don't have a lot of fat to pad your, your fat stores. They don't have the things that will cause the insulin resistance that leads to the diabetes that we see. They don't have any of that. My dad sat us all down as a family and he pretty much said that we were gonna change our life. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not gonna change my life over food. I love food, food's my best friend. <laughs> and he was just smiling and I was like, I'm serious, I'm not gonna stop eating meat, are you crazy? That's my protein. And he just smiled and he was like, no, I'm pretty sure you could get other protein out there, healthier protein. And he's like, do you know what vegan is? And I was like, no. He's like, well, vegan is just when you have, you eat nothing with the face no face products, nothing, and I was like shocked. I was like dairy, my milk, my cheese, my eggs.
What really made me change was my weight. I noticed that I just weighed too much. I was like almost 300 pounds. I was 12 pounds away from being 300 pounds. This first 21 days is like the hardest for me in my life. I swear it was so hard. I thought about giving up the first three days. I thought like, oh, let me just go back to the store and go grab some water burger or some quick food. And we didn't. I stopped eating meat and just continue with my vegetables and fruits and just downsizing my portion of the plate that, you know, that I was eating. I used to weigh 235 pounds and I noticed that I started losing like a half a pound, one pound, and my recent weight was 200 pounds, so I'm still going down. My doctor took me off or cut back on some medications and she took away like gluberite, which I was taking. She took that away and cut down on, on my metformin. My high blood pressure pill was also cut back. And my recent cholesterol count is you know, pretty good, pretty normal. I got myself off the sleep apnea machine, which I was using. I, I hardly use that anymore. I feel really good that my numbers are going down and then I sleep well, I eat well, and, and I'm not stressed out all the time. I'm not too worried about my health. Food is not just calories. Foods act like medicines. Foods really do bring cholesterol levels down. Foods really do help you to lose weight. They really do bring blood sugars down. They can replace, in many cases, what medicines are doing. So when a person embraces a plant-based diet, they really do get the power to heal. Would you like this big old garlic in here? <laughs> You are what you eat, and that's what really changed me. I lost about 80 pounds, give or take. <laughs> I lost my weight quick enough to make me feel good about myself. I noticed that my knee doesn't hurt. I can run five miles. I can hike. I don't get heartburn no more. My complexion's better. I personally think being vegan <laughs> is a spiritual thing. Being healthy, being one with your food. You know, Mother Earth grew that plant so that I could en enjoy it. This is our Mother Earth. That's where food comes from, healthy food. And I do know that there's a difference between being physically fit and being vegan fit. <laughs> Jensen is an inspiration to everyone. Um, you know, it's the day that you see your kid walk in and he has this big smile on his face that you haven't seen in years. And he's holding a pair of pants and he says, you know, I've had these pair of pants for three years and I can fit into them. He's so positive about life. He looks so good and he's so happy now. Everybody sees it and everybody feels it. And that's Jensen. And he wasn't that before, but he's that now. That was the gift that I gave back to Jensen. And when you give that gift to your child, it's the best feeling a parent can ever feel. My daughter, she would go have some fun by herself. She would ask me to do things. She would ask me to go play, but I was like, oh, I can't do it, I just can't. And that would break her heart. Now, I don't feel like that. And I'm like, hey, Ashley, let's go to the museum. Or, hey, Ashley, let's go um, play some basketball. 
any chance she can see mommy going out there, she's like, all right, let's go do it. And then we end up having a blast. <laughs> Since my mom's been, she changed her diet, we, we've been playing basketball or sometimes I would go on a run. She'll kind of speed walk as fast as she can and push herself. And I'm really happy that she does that because she has more time for me. I'm proud of her for making this change in your life and actually caring about your diet and what you're putting in your body. When people come to my house, they're like, wow. At first they're like, oh, should I bring my own food? But when you really learn to cook and you love what you're doing, then pretty soon, you know, the presentation and the colors are popping. And people are like, oh, I want to try that. And so before you know it, they're asking for the recipe, and so you're actually t turning somebody's life also. It just takes one person to change your life. That's what it took for me. And hopefully that's what it's going to take for my daughter. The point that I'm proud of in my life is that I can run or jog five miles up into the hills and I can still do push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups at my age. One of the main reasons why I'm doing this is you know to you know pass my experience to everybody that we need to stay on this diet, keep with it and to avoid, you know, eating the wrong kind of food. I'm most proud of myself because I'm vegan. I'm young, I'm healthy. To go outside to enjoy this beautiful weather, to feel good, to smile, I'm confident. <laughs> the thing I am most proud of, in all honesty, is my future. I didn't really have one. Not without diabetes anyway. I didn't have a future without it. Now I do. And how I did that was because of taking all the tools that I learned from the first day I walked into the doctor's office, Dr. Barnard's class, reading his books, inspiring my daughter, and just wanting that future, free from diabetes, not just for myself, but I want my whole, I want my grandchildren to be free of diabetes. I don't even want them to even know the word. I don't even want them to know it existed.